dear students today we are going to discuss about control of change scope and scope creep in the previous class i have discussed about three types of project controlling but in this lecture i'm going to discuss about control of change scope and scope creep the agenda for this lecture is first i will discuss what are the causes for project change then why the project scope is changing that is the reason for scope creep and what is the purpose of formal change control system then i will discuss about the guidelines for effective change control then finally i will discuss about controlling creative activities what are the causes for project change the initial project plan will likely change before they are finished because whatever the plan which you do but always there will be more chance for changing the project scope so project changes result from three basic causes the first cause is uncertainty about the technology on which the work of the project or its output is based because when there is uncertainty about the technology once you started to implement the project the technology may change then the scope of the project also will change that is the one reason second reason is an increase in the knowledge base or sophistication of the client or user leading to the scope creep the second reason is the client knowledge base may increase they will get more inputs more knowledge about the projects then they want there is a change in the project the third reason is modification of the rules applying to the process of carrying out the project or its output so when the rule changes then the project scope project expectation also changes so these are the three reasons that there is a change occurs in your project all three causes what i have discussed are especially common in software projects where scope creep is legendary because we are permitting we are welcoming scope creep in a software project when your project's process or output is changed there is almost always an associated change in budget or schedule so when we output an expectation changes we should remember that the budget also will change schedule also change i brought the picture on the right hand side that cowboy stadium there is a more than 1500 changes has happened before completing this project so just i wanted to say that always there will be a lot of changes will happen in your project so when there is a change that will affect our budget also that will affect the schedule also so you should be very careful when you accommodate changes from our client so coping with the changes and changing priorities is perceived as the most important single problem facing the project manager or if not the most important certainly the most irritating problem a survey was conducted for the among the project managers so what kind of changes is generally taking place in your project everybody is agreed that the changes in the scope is the most important more prominent changes so changing project requirement was the most frequent risk class and and that will impact the project performance so whenever there is a change in the project scope that is a kind of a risk so that will affect your project performance the most common change are those due to the natural tendency of the client and the project team members to try to improve the product or service because always the product features the product performance they customers expecting the clients are expecting that should be increased so that they realize at the later part of the project then they are asking that clients are asking the project manager to incorporate that changes new demands and scope requirements become apparent to the client which were not realized at the time of project initiation the another reason is when there is a new demand then the people ask for changes in our project hansberger agree and that attribute scope creep to just two reason then why now we'll discuss about why there is a scope creep occurs the first reason is stakeholders only being consulted at the beginning of the project because the stakeholder has to be consulted throughout the project but many time we consult only at the beginning of the project so later point of time that stakeholders want some changes the second reason is requirement were changing due to new information about the project's needs 
So, they whenever people get the clients get new information, then they are asking to change the project scope. New technologies become available or better ideas occur to the team as the work progress. As noted earlier, the later these changes are made in the project, the more difficult and costly they are to complete. So, when somebody says that changes in the project once the project is progress, if it is late for giving the changes into the project, so that is very costly. So, Barba recommends that the project managers frame the project in such a way that the sponsors and the clients can see for themselves what the trade off of a desired scope change are. So, what the point I wanted to say here is whenever there is a changes in the project along that there is a cost also changes and the schedule also changes. So, the, the project budget is increasing. So, now we have to see whether that the change has to be accommodated or not accommodated. So, we need to go for trade off instead of telling the client no simply say sure we can change the design I will reply with the change schedule and the budget impact. So, instead of saying directly no to the changes what we can say yes I can accommodate the changes, but along with the change there will be a new budget will be there there will be a new schedule that I will come with after some time this way you can answer. So, without the control a continuing accumulation of little changes can significantly impact the project's schedule and cost. So, if there are so many changes are occurring directly will affect the project schedule and the project cost. So, control of scope creep is accomplished with a formal change control system, which in some industries is a part of their configuration management system responsible for integrating and coordinating changes throughout the system development cycle. The purpose of the formal change control system is to review all requested changes to the project and identify all task impact. If there is a new task is coming, how that will impact the project performance. Now, we will see the purpose of formal change control system. So, we need to have a proper change control system. What is the purpose of that? Review all requested changes to the project both content and procedures that is the first purpose. Second identify all task impact then translate these impact into the project scope cost and schedule evaluate the benefits and cost of the requested changes these are the purpose of a formal change control system. Then identify alternative changes that might accomplish the same end accept or reject the requested changes communicate the changes to all concerned parties, ensure that the change are implemented properly, then prepare monthly report that summarize all changes to date and their project impact. So, these are the purpose of having formal change control system. Now, we will see certain guidelines for effective change control. All project contracts or agreement must include a description of how request for change in the project's plan, budget, schedule and deliverable will be introduced and processed. Once a project is approved, any change in the project will be in the form of change order that will include a description of agreed upon change together with any changes in the plan, budget, schedule and deliverables that result from the change. For any but minor changes, a risk identification and analysis study should be performed. To study the potential impact of change, it is often possible to conduct a simulation study. The project manager must be consulted on all desired changes prior to the preparation and approval of the change order. The project manager's approval however, is not required only he has to be informed. Changes must be approved in writing by the client's agent and by an appropriate representative of senior management of the firm responsible for carrying out the project. Once the change order has been completed and approved, the project plan should be amended to reflect the change and the change order become a part of the project plan. Now, 
will discuss about how to control creative activities. For example, controlling research and development projects, design projects and similar process that depends on intimately on the creativity of individuals and teams. So, if there is a change in this project when there is a creative where the creativeness is included, how to do that? First, the more creativity involved, the greater the uncertainty surrounding the outcomes. So, what will happen? If any task is which are highly creative task, there is a more uncertainty will occur. Second, too much control tends to inhibit the creativity because the task is related to creativity, but when you bring so much control, then there is a loss for creativity. Control is not the enemy of creativity. While the exact outcome of creativity may be uncertain, the process of getting the outcome is usually not uncertain. If the potential payoff for the creative activity is high, the need for careful risk management is also high. To control creative project, the project manager must adopt one or some combination of three general approaches to the problem. The first approach is process review, the second approach is personal reassignment, the third approach is control of input resources. First we will discuss about process review. The process review focuses on the process of reaching outcome rather than the outcome itself, because the outcomes are partially dependent on the process used to achieve them, uncertain though they may be, the process is subjected to control. For example, in research projects, the researcher cannot be held responsible for the outcome of the research, but can most certainly be held responsible for adherence to the research proposal, budget and the schedule. So, the process is controllable even if the precise result or not. So, what should be the output, but we can control the process of getting that output. Control should be instituted at each project's milestone and obvious opportunity for phase gate controls. If research result are not as expected or desired, milestone provide a convenient opportunity to assess the state of progress, the value of accomplishment to date, the probability of valuable result in the future and the desirability of changes in the research design. Again, the object of control is ensuring that the research design is sound and carried out as planned or amended. The review process should be participative, unilateral judgment from the superior are not apt to be acceptable or effective. Care must be taken to oversee the method as opposed to the result. Here, because it is the creative activity, so we should not bother about the result, but we should bother about the method of achieving that result. We should control about only the method of achieving the result. So, method is controlled and should be controlled, but the result are still what counts. The next process is personal reassignment. This type of control is straightforward. Individuals who are productive are kept, those who are not are moved to other jobs or other organizations. Problem with this technique can arise because it is easy to create an elite group. While the forward few are highly motivated to further achievement, everyone else tend to be the demotivated. It is also important not to apply control with the too fine an edge. While it is not difficult to identify those who fall in the top and bottom quartiles of productivity, it is usually quite challenging to make clear distinctions between people in the middle quartile. Now, we will discuss about another way of controlling creative projects that is a control of input resources. In this case, the focus is on efficiency. The ability to manipulate input resources carries with it a considerable control over output. Obviously, efficiency is not synonymous with creativity, but the converse is equally untrue. Creativity is not synonymous with the extravagant use of resources. The result of flowing from creative activity tend to arrive in batches. Considerable resource expenditure 
may occur with no visible result, but then seemingly all of a sudden many outcomes may be delivered. The milestone for application of resource control must therefore be chosen with great care. The controller who decides to withhold the resources just before the completion of a research project is apt to become an X controller. Sound judgment argues for some blend of these three approaches when controlling creating projects. The first and third approaches concentrate on the process because the process is observable and can be affected, but the process is not a matter of moment results are. So, the second approach requires us to measure output when it occurs. This is often quite difficult, thus the wise project manager will use all three approaches that is checking processes and methods, manipulating resources, culling those who cannot produce. Dear students, in this lecture I have discussed about causes for project change, then what are the reasons for scope creep, then I have discussed about purpose of formal change control system, then I have explained about guidelines for effective change control system, finally I have discussed about how to control creative activities. In that I have explained three approaches, one is process review, personal reassignment, control of input resources. Thank you.